Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in. Uh, it is the end of the weekend, Sunday, November 4th, 2018, about 2.45 p.m. here. Back to normal time, standard time, I guess, here in the, along the West Coast. Which means it's going to be getting dark at about 5 o'clock, which is awesome because I love it when it gets dark early. But that's just me. Anyway, folks, a snowy, cold day up at Yellowstone National Park right there. You can see a few folks out there uh, waiting or taking pictures of the old Faithful Geyser region right there uh, in western Wyoming, Yellowstone National Park right there. And also uh, some earthquake activity occurring up there as well. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in just a minute, but I do want to bring up the latest earthquake right here in Arizona. Uh, we have been seeing a little bit of activity. I can take this back a couple days here and bring some more activity here within the vicinity in the region there. Uh, we'll take it back just a couple days there. And most of the activity is light, nothing major in the region, uh, but that also includes parts of uh, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, south southeastern Texas down there too. Uh, but anyway, all this activity that you're seeing out here um, is pretty much right up against the North American Craton right here. That includes uh, portions of or just outside of that region of the North American Craton uh, but that also includes New Mexico uh, Arizona and stuff like that in the Intermountain West as well uh, I do want to take a look at this most recent 3.1 earthquake uh, it is located near Flagstaff Arizona of all places and a few folks reporting it I'm going to bring that up here right now just going to add this on here real quick but definitely activity has been on the increase folks uh, along the west coast and uh, also on the southern end of the uh, hold on a second here southern part of the uh, the American Craton out there the North American Craton which is a stable part stable part of the the landmass out there that hasn't moved much within the past hundred million years I believe they said um, but it's a really interesting I'm not going to go into it right now but uh, the North American Craton if you get a chance check it out it is pretty cool um, to study it and to uh, and to learn a little bit more about it. Let's add that real quick, uh, make it a little bit less transparent. So this here is a 3.1 here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, that's the one that you just seen on the globe there. This is occurring at about five kilometers below the surface. Uh, not a big earthquake, folks. But it is uh, some activity that we haven't really seen in a while. I mean, New Mexico's had a little bit of earthquake activity. Arizona really hasn't seen too much. Um, so let's see if we can get a pinpoint location of where this is at here on the map. Okay, so you got uh, kind of got Flagstaff down here. I do want to go. Let's go to. Um, we can go to the aerial real quick and check that out here. Zoom in just a tad bit. The star is, of course, the epicenter location, um, which is uh, where'd you go? <laughs> Hold on a second here. Oh, okay, I'm way off here. Um, yeah, the star indicating the epicenter of where this earthquake has taken place. Uh, like I say, not a big one, just 3.1, pretty small. I guess a couple people did feel it within the region there. Um, and of course there's old volcanic structures and whatnot all over the place down there. Old lava spills that you can see uh, out here um, that has happened in the distant past. I know flying into Phoenix there a couple times I'm just um, in awe of the amount of old lava structures and, and old flows that you can witness from uh, 30,000 feet or so. It's pretty crazy. And that was... Uh, that's about pretty much every time I fly, I can I can see that. But um, so the star once again, no, uh, no specific lava domes or anything out here within the vicinity. Of course, that's only about one mile scale. Um, we take it back a little bit further, and they start getting towards the uh, the towns over here. Uh, but it looks like possibly what is that? A creek that runs through there. I'm not super familiar with it. Uh, but it does look like some from from this view it kind of looks like a creek but then again maybe not it kind of looks like it might be raised up off the ground like a like a varicose vein so to speak that's an interesting little feature out there uh, around that 3.1 I 
I will have to check more into it uh, in a little bit, but I just wanted to give you guys a general location of where uh, this has taken place. Yeah, interesting. So, um, you know, with that being said, there's definitely a lot of earthquake activity and a lot of pressure being being applied out here along the west coast, which is kind of squeezing Yellowstone in a way as well. Um, and I will get to that here in just one second once again. But I do want to get rid of some of these uh, older quakes and take a look at the most recent newer ones. Over the last well, 24 hours or so, you can see uh, just continued activity out here. Uh, there was another quake just north of, let's see where this one's at, it's 2.5, just north of the Arizona region. Um, well, still within Arizona near Fredon Fredonia, Arizona. Uh, and that one just a 2.5. Uh, you guys can't see it there, but also a 2.7. Let me check this out here. 2.7 took place in, it uh, looks like, southern Utah. So definitely some activity occurring out there on this southern edge of this uh, North American craton here. And that's, you know, this area that's kind of having these quakes uh, are the areas around it. The deformed part, like the Rockies and down through uh, parts of southern Texas. Uh, and even up around Tennessee was having a little bit of earthquake activity too, which is a New Madrid fault system. Uh, which I'm sure everyone knows about, capable of producing some mega quakes as well. I've uh, been pretty dormant recently, but uh, that also includes that area right there, right around the North American Craton here. And if you don't, if you're not for sure what the North American Craton is, go check it out. Go check it up if you get a chance. Um, I did give a little brief uh, info on it, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on that now. I do want to cover the rest of the globe out here. As far as earthquake activity goes it's definitely been on the increase and we've seen some deep earthquakes here recently uh, including a large 6.0 earthquake um, that is really deep almost 600 kilometers below the surface you can see in the little box up here 598 kilometers to be exact that is a big earthquake at a very deep depth below the surface there also over here towards Fiji Islands, which is no stranger to deep earthquakes, they also have a couple moderate-sized earthquakes, uh, maybe even minor, minor to moderate earthquakes there, uh, well below 500 kilometers below the surface. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to say it again. Uh, of course, that 5.9 uh, happened here a little bit ago, but after this large 6.0 earthquake activity, and even some earthquake activity up in Alaska. So, like I said before. Last time we seen a large, deep earthquake like this, a 6.0 at 600 kilometers below the surface, we started seeing a, 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 an increased period of earthquakes, of rather large earthquakes too, uh, striking pretty much all around the Pacific Ring of Fire. And that's it's something to pay attention to and something to watch here over the next couple days. I mean, we're already seeing a little bit of uh, activity following that 6.0 like I mentioned that 5.9 up here uh, north of Japan also 4.4 near Alaska Aleutian Islands region and um, I think we need to be on guard here out here because uh, it's very possible with all this activity occurring at very deep levels that we're gonna see some adjustment uh, and at, like I said we're already seeing that we're already seeing a little bit of adjustment out here uh, just where where? Uh, anywhere along the Pacific Plate for that matter. Um, just because we're seeing a 5.9 up in uh, the Japan region right now does not mean that that area is free and clear. Um, that area could be hit by maybe another larger quake. Uh, it just it all depends on where the weak spots are and where uh, the pressure has been kind of building up over the last uh, amount of time, certain amount of time. Uh, West Coast is definitely no stranger to large earthquakes, and um, it's been quite a while since we've seen any activity over there. Uh, the pressure is still continuing along the West Coast, and we're seeing parts of that. Uh, we're seeing a sign of that by looking at all these other quakes over here uh, in Arizona and, and Texas, and all this stuff. All this stuff is pretty much uh, evident of a lot of pressure being applied uh, within these regions right here along the West Coast and the plate boundary, which is, of course, the North American plate and the large Pacific plate out here. But of course you got the Juan de Fuca plate and the Gorda Escapement plate and 
everything else up here that's kind of just a little part of that jigsaw puzzle that could pop out of place one day. It could be now. It could be tomorrow. Uh, we just have to watch and see what happens. I do want to point out a little information or a little bit of a activity occurring at the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Um, this is not earthquake activity, but rather, like I've mentioned before in the past, if you know, called slow slip tremor movement. And let me see if I can bring that up here real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me refresh that page. And then I'll pop this up here. Oops, I hit the wrong one, sorry. Okay. So this is a little bit better. I made it less transparent so you guys can actually see the, the uh, quakes out here. Not the quakes, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, but it's slow slip tremors uh, way down there in the Cascadia subduction region below the surface that's being uh, picked up by these uh, super sensitive equipment, uh, super sensitive equipment that's monitoring the area there. Uh, of course, you can see the west coast here. Uh, Northern California getting a little bit, Southern Oregon mostly right now, but this is over the last three hours. Let me show you guys here. Uh, real quick let's go back the last two days here and there's quite a bit of activity clustered in southern oregon and northern california also extending down to uh like the eureka region and arcata all up and down this section of the cascadia subduction zone which of course includes an area up here in salem oregon as well all this region up here folks where these trimmers are being monitored and taken place are ultimately uh, the, the Cascadia subduction zone region here and it's very uh, and that's kind of like the deeper part there's you know it extends kind of westward uh, as it gets as it gets closer to the ocean and out towards the ocean there it gets, of course it gets shallower but this is tremor being detected um, in the part of the subduction where it's moving or slowly moving subducting subducting beneath the North American plate so to speak if that makes sense um but i don't want to go into a bunch of technical uh technical stuff and, and words and because i'm gonna stumble i haven't had any coffee even though it may sound like it but i really haven't had any coffee today um so that's the last two days folks of activity um we can go back to last three hours here and for three hours of activity that is a lot that's just three hours right there in the real-time trimmer map last six hours almost doubles it and there's a fly in here for some reason it's like 80 degrees out and there's flies here in november that is not good so i'm gonna have to go catch that guy but uh anyway folks i'm just kind of pointing out this activity that's occurring all around the uh pacific ring of fire and extending over towards the north american craton uh we got tremor being detected along the cascadia subduction zone and uh, I do want to show you guys the activity that's occurring up at Yellowstone National Park here. Ooh, oh, that's up in here. Ah, shoot. Okay, hold on one second, folks. I'm doing this. Might as well show you guys that part I'm talking about, the North American Craton, since it is on here. That's area in brown right there is, and it says it specifically, the continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past 600 million years. I, I was way off. I said 100 million years or 200. I can't remember, but 600 million years of stable, uh, you know, not moving. Of course, while the rest of it, the purple stuff, or I guess it's kind of purplish, is de deformed craton, which includes the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and the mountains that extend up to Wyoming, which includes parts of, right on the edge of that craton is, is the Yellowstone caldera, the hot spot, so to speak. But it's kind of right there on the edge of the North American craton and the, uh, the Intermountain West part over there. But it extends up through Montana as well and into Canada, of course and east along like the tennessee valley region over towards ohio new madrid fault system and extending down through portions of new mexico and into texas where we've seen that earthquake activity recently in the texas region 
Um, so a lot of pressure being moved around and, and, and applied within this area from the west coast over here. Um, this fly is really bugging me. Let me go over here to the Yellowstone display that I was going to show you guys. And right now, the activity that we're seeing over here on, in Yellowstone, this is a web recorder called YMC. And it's uh, the most recent shot that I uh, took from the Yellowstone thumbnails. And it's showing a little bit of activity. Uh, not a lot, but all this activity occurred pretty much recently and right after the large 6.0 that took place in uh, in this region of the world over here see the 6.0 over here earlier but well, that 6.0 having that depth of almost 600 kilometers does affect other portions of the world believe it or not a lot of folks used to think nah there's no way a, an earthquake can affect an area 3,000 miles away but it does trust me it does and a lot of folks are kind of wakening up to that and it's a uh, it's a big thing and anyway it looks like my stream may have stopped actually it looks like it's going right now okay but I was gonna I was gonna go ahead and keep recording just in case but there was a little pause right now hopefully I'm not being attacked out here on the on the uh, on the stream but I was watching it for a second I lost the connection but now we're good so you know, a lot of this earthquake activity that's 2,000 miles away or more can affect a location way over here, folks. It definitely can. And it seemed like as soon as I started talking about that is when I had problems there with the stream. But uh, we'll move on here and take a look at the most recent graphs here from Yellowstone. And you can see a little bit of activity, folks, occurring. Now, it lasted for about, what do we got here? One, two, three... About three hours of small quakes there in Yellowstone National Park could be a start to the swarm a swarm I should say uh, but we're, we are watching it I do have some live um, graphs up to watch it live uh, one of the stations to watch specifically for earthquake activity in that northwest corner of the park where the activity is currently occurring this is a station called uh, Madison 207, and you'll see it right here. This is a station right here in Yellowstone, Wyoming. This station is situated in the northwest corner of the park where we've seen a lot of swarms in the past, and uh, that's where we're seeing the activity right now. Um, not saying there is a swarm going on, but there was definitely uh, a couple hours there, more than a couple hours of some back-to-back -back earthquake activity in the park, and... Uh, that's normally how swarms kick off so we are watching it and I will keep a close eye on it as always but uh, anyway folks uh, the whole point is just be prepared out there I mean even places like Colorado for example can be earthquake country any place can I mean even the East Coast uh, Montana Washington Oregon I mean you name it everybody thinks California is just the earthquake uh, earthquake country but Look at Arizona. Look at New Mexico. Look at Texas. A lot of earthquake activity occurring out there in kind of strange places, folks. So just be prepared, be on guard, and uh, just keep your eyes open. Stay safe out there. All right, folks, we'll catch you guys a little bit later on. I'm going to sit back here and uh, see if I can't make me some coffee finally today. I've been pretty busy just getting some yard work done and also watching some movies and kind of binge watching. Uh, Amazon Prime re recently kind of in that horror movie type uh, mode just watching some scary movies even after Halloween I still like scary movies so all right folks play safe uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later